Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Overwatch All Stars Brawl 4. As always, presented by Star Esports, a double elimination tournament dedicated to the Overwatch Tier 3 community. Today, we're going to have Scion taking on T Money uh, in the lower bracket. Today, I, poor Zach, will be your play by play, joined by Got Moxie. So, we just came out of a map that went to five. I'm hoping that we get to see just as close to one because it's always enjoyable to see teams get matched up with people that really push them to their limits and force us to look at that 99 to 99%. Yeah, and I think that today in this match now probably won't be anything too different. Both of these teams are very, very good. Uh, T-Money going up against Scion here, so... Starting off on King's Row, both these teams won their recent King's Row matches. It seems like all we have is winners for King's Row today uh, until it finally comes down to, well, one team's going to be better than another. Who's going to be the loser? And starting off with King's Row, could be interesting to see here. Scion uh, was able to take it pretty pretty well here, uh, but T-Dollar was able to take it with quite a lot of time in the time make as well. I think the real advantage is gonna go to whichever team is able to cope with the uh, the changes to this current patch that Blizzard have implemented. Yes, they're not really impactful. Yes, the heroes that they hit are still very much at the forefront of the meta. But you do have to adapt to how you play like Hanzo. Essentially, it's old Hanzo that we have now, so you have to forget about how you learn second level Hanzo and just go back to that original uh, aim, which is throwing a couple of those players for a loop. Similarly, I've heard a lot of people now complain about trying to get out of Mayfreeze, especially Reapers, I know, because you had that uh, cooldown, not cooldown, countdown that you used to do because you knew you would get frozen at a certain point, so you would rave at that point. But now it's trying to adjust to that new time to try and rave out that is throwing quite a lot of people off kilter. Yeah, and I think it could be, you know, just, I don't know, something that they can change a little bit easily. Maybe they just kind of want to change up their team composition and not really have to worry about that too much. Uh, both these teams, you know, I mean, they're pretty meta standard. I don't really expect them uh, to be going in uh, to anything too crazy. But yeah, maybe a dive coming out today. On King's Row, I, I don't expect to see a dive coming out on King's Row. Yes, there is a, a fair bit of high ground that you can find, especially around that point. But we do start seeing defensive Batistas utilizing that same high ground trying to hide up uh, on the hallway directly above the point to make sure that you still have a really nice clear view of the team that you're trying to heal but that you're obscured from the enemy so they can't go for that early pickoff because if you can get the batiste out of the team fight before it even begins you take out immortality field you take out so much of that healing and you take out that amplification matrix which just builds up so insanely quickly even with those changes coming in, that means that charge is 20% slower now. It's still building just as quickly as Moira's Coalescence used to. And if you can get that online and place it in front of your team, then it just means that the people who are wanting to go towards that point, they're just going to think twice and they're going to start walking towards their spawn door before the kills even start coming. Yeah, and I think it especially kind of makes itself prevalent on defense where everybody can kind of utilize it and not really have to worry about like pushing forward too much when you're on the offense and you use it it makes it a lot more difficult because you know you may be able to put it down right in front of that team but then they're just kind of like oh that's fine we'll just walk back to the point around this wall and it's just kind of like oh man you know like oh i can't do anything now ah, man so yeah. it just kind of makes it difficult to try to find value with it so maybe you want to use it later in a fight when you have that position that you want i don't know I mean, I like to see offensive uh, attacking Batistes use it when they're actually in the team fight on the point because it forces the defending team to make that choice. Do they give up a couple of ticks on the point in fear of losing it entirely? Or do they back out, acknowledge Amplification Matrix is down and just not take the risk of losing the team fight? So maybe give up a couple of point percentage and then come back in for that proper contest after it's faded away. Yeah, and I think that is really kind of that double-edged sword. It's like, okay, well, if we do stay back, we can just wait it out, you know. 
but then it's like okay well they have two ticks so then it's like we had you don't even have the option to wait it out the next team fight but if you were to go in now and it's like oh we won the fight they don't have any ticks on the board we can stay back for next fight if we really need to and it's just kind of like you have to make that decision i feel like based on ultimates like if you have a blizzard you might just want to go ahead and throw it in there because they're gonna have to all either back away from that uh amplification matrix or they're gonna stay in that blizzard and probably end up just getting frozen uh just kind of hoping that before that does happen they're able to get a pick or two so i think it's just kind of realizing what you have at your disposal and then making that decision of okay back off or okay go in and it would have to be the blizzard because we see so many maids try to put in as a reaction to amplification matrix coming in that wall and while yes it is so so nice to have that coming down and see that play coming in it's very smart but amplification matrix and may walls they get burnt down so quickly when they're in front of them and so it only provides that little bit of time that very small window for the teams to be able to disengage out of the fight without taking casualties you cannot stick around expecting that wall to last because it will not yeah and speaking of the wall right now as we go into king's row here may you're you're probably gonna end up seeing her on the defense at least if not on the offense and defense here you know uh we might see something different run on the offense i wouldn't expect anything too crazy to uh come out of it right now of course they're on a a few different heroes but that's to be expected while they're just kind of hanging out in the spawn room meanwhile we see the defense here going with that standard meta composition nothing nothing too crazy uh just kind of keeping it vanilla right now but maybe we see a little bit of a change up if things don't uh keep going their way yeah they've got oasis on the May, so they are gonna be looking for that first may will down for when scion try to come through these gates if they can single out the Arista because Scion at the moment they're not running the Lucius so the speed boost will not be available it's the Zen they're favoring the Discord orb over that uh, orb over that which means that there is that opportunity that you do have now to try to get that pick off with the Maywall separate someone from the team take them out of the fight early yeah and right now it looks like just trying to take the high ground Ashen actually getting pulled and now going down because of that rock hitting them right in the face. There's not much they can do about that. Up on the high ground now, Dusk trying to put in a little bit more damage before having to back off here. They see that the rest of the team has backed off, so they're just going to go ahead and walk up to this point. But Supreme gets caught out in the back line. Kitty King able to get that first pick off there. Now as they move forward onto the point, backing off. The immortality is down, but... Too many players are going down right now on the side of Scion, so they won't be able to probably hold this for much longer as they continue forward in their push and that they aren't now just Osias hanging out in that cube of ice trying to stall for a little bit longer, but it's not going to be enough. The point's going to be flipped over here in less than a minute. And unfortunately for Team Money, they pulled back. They played very passively, so they'd already given up that one tick before the teamfight even properly begins. And then they lose the teamfight, which means that point is just slipped out of their fingers. Uh, we're seeing that it's going to be PMA Jellies actually putting in that amplification matrix to just dissuade Team Money from trying to get in that contest. And it really is nice because it will deny all of that space. No one wants to walk the street space when that amount of damage is coming out from your opponent. Yeah, now with that immortality down, they're going to have to back up at least a little bit here because you don't want to get in too close with this May. Osias actually able to slow down the side just a little bit for them to be able to get that pick off here. Now the Rock coming through, they're just allowed to have so much aggression knowing that that, uh, that the May is gone. They're able to pick up two more kills onto the tanks and able to hold this choke here that normally we see teams like to hold when the cart gets there, but as long as they're able to get it a little bit later, it's not that big of a deal. You're going to see that the Scion, they're going to be struggling quite a lot to try and get past this choke. They cannot come for that direct approach because uh, Asias now has that Blizzard available. Yes, Gummy can get that eat onto it, but it is extremely hard to manage to uh, coordinate that one. It's not like the Diva Defense Matrix where it seems to just go on and on. You have to really thread the needle. And I can count the amount of times that I've seen Sigma's eat Blizzard on my hand yeah it, it can be very hard for that sigma and i mean it's not like a defense matrix where it's got a lot of range in front of you either it's kind of like flat on your body so you have to be looking that may in the face to really be able to uh 
eat that ultimate and to stop it from really doing, you know, all that damage that uh, it could potentially put into your team comp or the rest of your team. And now just backing up here, it looks like the dragon's gonna come through, but Dusk stuck up at the top. They're just gonna take all that damage, but Psy already out again here. Now pushing forward, here comes the blizzard, able to get everybody relatively in except for Gummy in the back, just trying to put in a lot of damage with that bongo they have up here, but it looks like they're going to be able to go for it a little bit more with all these picks going through Mythology. Just trying to heal Osias as they run over onto the point. Trying to back up now, stuck in that ice cube. They might be able to capitalize off this now, knowing that they don't have that. The Maywall could be used here in a second to try to stall it out a little bit longer. They're stuck over here at the top, but now using the Amplification Mace, we're supposed to do a lot more damage. It's put in a weird position, so they might not be able to use it to its full potential, but they're still going forward with it. So far, so good, it looks like. Able to take out Kitty King. This offense might be able to actually cap this with a fairly good time make as they're able to get more kills here. The Flux comes up, is able to get three in that, able to kill one right off the bat. Hero going down next. Ashton following suit. Now Mythology also going down. They're going to be able to cap this here with a little over three minutes now, having almost five in their time bank. Team Money, they're playing way too passively. I've seen them give up ground so many times and favorable defensive ground that they really could have utilized so much better. That choke, just letting that pillage slide all the way through street space completely uh, undeterred. Yes, now you do have this transcendence and supercharges that you're just going to see immediately be put down, but losing the Zen before transcendence can come online. Sion can push in on this. They've got the blizzard available. They know the Zen isn't there to see it through. Yeah, but I don't think the May was in quite a good position yet to follow up on that. They were able to put it down last second, though, there. Looks like they're going to be able to pick up Dusk in that. Sion now able to move forward just a little bit more. Now taking out Hero. That's both the tanks gone and the May. Now using the Transcendence, not even able to save Ashton in time. Now kind of using that to keep themselves up. Mythology over at the top is going to have to be the one to touch the point if it's going to be anybody, but it doesn't look like anybody's going to be able to get to it now. Four minutes, basically, in the time bank here. That payload, once it had started, once it had gotten past that first choke, it didn't stop. It just kept rolling and rolling. And unfortunately for Team Money, they just gave up so much space that eventually they just find themselves with their backs against the wall. You saw Kitty actually had to put the Transcendence in solo, not able to keep anyone alive. I would rather have the, uh, the Zen put that Transcendence in to try and get to the point, stall it just a little bit longer, maybe get the reinforcements coming in because you are so much closer in that spawn vicinity. But unfortunately, no, he just uses it to disengage and tries to flank around Sion, but it's a flanking Zen. And flanking Zens, uh, they're, they're not the sturdiest of targets. Yeah, and I mean, Kitty Kings had, like, it feels like they were taken out at the start of the last two, three fights first, whether it was getting picked by a Hanzo arrow or just kind of getting picked off by something else, you know? So I think just trying to play a little bit more passively uh, for Kitty King, maybe whether that be hiding behind a wall or just kind of playing closer to cover, maybe trying to keep someone in between you and the enemy to make sure that if a stray arrow does come through, that the chances of it hitting you are very minimal. All in all, I think it's just kind of, it's kind of unlucky when certain things like that happen, you know? Sometimes the Hanzo's just lobbing in arrows at the tanks and the tank moves out of the way, there's your head right there in the perfect area. Just unfortunate timing sometimes. Well, Kitty King, it's the first map, so they can start working on those positioning errors because if there's one uh, role that you do want to stay alive as long as possible, it is that support. There's a little bit of a disconnect on the side of Scion. Uh, it's Gummy having a little bit of an impromptu uh, leaving. But it allows us a little bit of time to talk about once more these, these, these matchups. It's going to be the two maids, and it feels like Overwatch at the moment, it's just a talk of mirror matchups. Whether the Batiste is able to get the Immortality Field to find more value than the other Batiste, whether the Mei has the Blizzard online faster than the other Mei, whether the Zen is going to have Transcendence before the other Zen, you do have to start really building those ultimates up and up, up very quickly, because whoever hits their stride and gets their ultimates online first is going to have such a huge advantage over the other team. Yeah, and now, I mean, it makes it difficult when it is that mirror matchup because it's just kind of like, it feels like one's just baiting it out for the other, just kind of waiting for your counterpart to use that immortality, to use that Maywall, to use uh, the halt, just to kind of 
you know, try to outdo your opponent in that sort of sense. It can make it very difficult to kind of use yours the way you want it to. And if it happens for both teams, it feels like a stalemate until finally one uses it, and then it feels like everyone uses their abilities. Oh, Gummy unfortunately had that disconnect, so Team Money can move in on this because the segment just hasn't managed to get to the team at the moment. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate, but it looks like they're going to be able to keep themselves up. Thank goodness for that immortality field, actually, to make them be able to do that here. They are going to give up two ticks at this point, it looks like. They had to make that decision, but now they have to make the decision to go back in here. No one getting picked quite yet, though, so they've done a good job of keeping themselves up here. And actually, the first pick going over onto Hero. Now onto Mythology. It looks like T-Money is not going to be able to cap this first point. They were able to get quite a few uh, ticks on their main engine to get two of them. So it could be easier for them going into their next fight, but I think right there is quite honestly one of their best opportunities because they were already down that Sigma. But Mythology is going to have this amplification matrix up, although PMA Jellies has it, and we talked about this a little bit before the map begins. The Batistu has amplification matrix, who's in the defending stance, has that favorable positioning because you can literally just pull away from the wall. Mythology is going to have to be so careful about where they invest this. They have to wait for that May wall to come through from Slice so that it doesn't just immediately go in front. Yeah, right now it looks like they're going around through the hotel. They're using that amplification matrix over at the top. They see everyone through that wall thing for that sonar. And actually, Mythology able to pick up two there. That might have been with just one burst, able to hit both headshots onto those players. Now this defense doesn't look like it's going to be able to stay up much longer. Now more people just fall on the side of Scion. Mythology going in and just, it feels like, I think they got like a 4K possibly there. That was really good. Not quite as clean as when Scion managed to pick up that point, but Team Money will be starting to move that payload. And again, they're going for this really nice aggressive posi uh, positioning that we see from so many teams to make sure that that payload just does not stop at that first choke. Because you do see, if you look at Scion Esports, that they have the tools to make sure that that payload does stop. That Blizzard will stop things in its tracks, especially with Kitty King coming up to the Transcendence, yes, but not quite there. So Scion Esports, if they play this smart, if they initiate things before that Sun is able to get that up and they have to do it quickly, they will be able to get that payload to hold. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to be starting off actually with this Blizzard here, but the Transcendence is able to come through to try to keep them up for as long as possible, but where's my jewel is finding all the picks right now make that four in their favor i mean when you just have so much damage able to go through because of uh not only that discord but just the help of the rest of the team also putting in damage a quick headshot or even a body shot could be the one that ends you and that's exactly what happened there everyone was stuck in place because of that blizzard it was just free shooting well, Sion are going to be trying to hold this choke for just a little bit longer. I don't want to see these guys give up this really nice positioning that we saw Team Money just pull back from. Yeah, and it looks like as they slowly move up here to the bookstore, they're going to try to be holding this corner. And now at the top, Gummy trying to hold it off for as long as he can. Both of these bongos have gone down. Now it looks like a dragon actually going through. Might be able to pick up one. Yes, it will make that uh, say he's going to be going down here. And now it looks like with the flux going through, Immortality was very well very well placed. Now the Blizzard as well into that back line might be able to pick the Orisa. But of course, the shields in front of them, they're going to be able to stay up for a little bit longer, but maybe not too long. PMA went to go get the heals, but it was too little too late. So many were already there ready to do something about that. PMA just running back over to the point to try to stall it out for as long as possible because I don't think they're going to be able to get another recontest in here. Uh, once again, we see teams really flourishing on the offense, but falling apart a little bit on the defense. And yes, these two Batistas, they will have these amplification matrixes, but again, you do have that option. You can just disengage and negate them entirely. So Morphology has to be really careful because a couple of times these amplification matrixes have been just a little bit questionable. They haven't been in those right angles. You want them flat. You want them facing the enemy team. You want them preferably around the corner. Yeah, and now as they're moving forward here, they're kind of just giving a little bit of space up. Now deciding to use that amplification matrix. Actually stuck on the point right now in the ice cube. They're gonna have to be a little bit careful. Besides now backing up. Thankfully not getting picked off. Now as they move forward here, a big pull comes through, possibly getting through a lot of damage here. The Maywall plays perfectly so that way they have to focus that in particular, but Niche still goes down along with Say now. They have to back up. Looks like they might be able to make it before anyone else gets picked. I take that back. Supreme now also goes down. PMA Jelly's up at the top. It gets taken down by Kitty King. And now as they push forward here, the time bank, while it may not be as good, is still a very massive time bank. But the Blizzard going on to point is going to make it difficult for anyone to get on there for the stall. Thankfully, the Hanzo Ultimate is able to pick up one kill. Now both of these uh, signals are out of the fight. 
but lost both of your tanks on the defense here. Able to use this transcendence to keep them up for a little bit longer. The immortality is down though, they have to focus that. And now with the blizzard coming down, this might be their saving grace to keep this point from going to the end here. The, the Orisa goes down, everybody now going down. The only one on the point is Dusk on that ham and is just gonna decide to jump off so that way they don't feed any alt charge. Yeah, but Dusk had swapped, tried to go back into the team fight because the team, they read it as possible uh, winnable. And so you sacrifice the ult charge that you've been building up as Sigma. Reset completely. Meanwhile, Gummy has just been sticking stubbornly on that one. So you'll have a Sigma flex to throw in as soon as Team Money try to make this approach. And with these supercharges up, you can easily bait out the immortality build in 25 seconds cool, and you can flex immediately after. Yeah, and getting a lot of players in that flux. That's nearly everybody. Only the Ariso makes it out of that because of that Fortify. And now everybody being solo is going down. Sai is just taking everybody out with that little shard of ice in their face. And now back to spawn, a solid team kill. And if you're Sion, you can just cycle through ultimates now. Where's my jewels coming up to this dragon? Once that's been put in, Sai will be very close to a blizzard. The image Ellie's is going to be able to keep pace with Kitty King on these uh, sustaining ultimates. So you'll always have the same level of playing field when it comes to that one. And now using this amplification mates to try to build up a little bit of space gathered. But it looks like not only was there space gathered, but there was also a kill to be had there, taking outward my jewel as they back up now making sure that they aren't going to be picked off. Trying to hold this corner. They know that they're going to be able to stall. They have the defense. They have the better spawn. Waiting for this Maywell to go down. Now they might have to go around the side to get to the point in time. It looks like they're doing just that to get around. The Hanzo wall comes through a little too far to the left, though. The pull not able to pick up anybody. Actually, Ashton is stuck in there. They're going to be able to take out the Orisa and the Hanzo along with the Bab and the Lucio now. So it looks like this defense isn't going to be able to stall for as long as they were before here. Gummy getting taken out using a blizzard on point to prevent anyone else from going in. A good rock on a niche as they were making their way over to the point. With less than a minute though, even if they are about to cap it here, the time bank difference is absolutely massive. Yeah, 3 minutes 55 to 49 seconds and finally that pillar is going to roll on through. Sion could have hold up, held on to that one though for so much longer. If West My Jewel hadn't been picked out of two team fights before early, then you would have been able to have all the time in the world to comfortably set up a dragon. You could easily do one of those drop down dragons. Uh, there's a ledge that we like to, to see Reapers uh, drop down from with Death Blossom or Ryan's even go for the back shadow. The Hanzo can easily be so mobile that he can just hide behind, put a little bit of a back dragon in, get the team into chaos and allow the rest of his, his comrades to move in and find all of the, the kills afterwards. But no, one minute though. So if you're fine, you're very happy with that defense. You've held off team money for a very long time. And the difference, it's going to be so key because one minute is two team fights. You have one minute to build up ultimates. You have one minute to meet your win condition and that will be this blizzard. And you have only one shot at this. Which means that if you don't get the immortality field out of the way, that blizzard has just gone and thrown into the wind. Yeah, and I think it's going to be super hard for this offense to actually see anything really come out of it if they aren't able to do uh, enough damage in this first fight to build up that ultimate that they need. Gummy, though, is going to be off of that Sigma and instead play the Reinhardt, so a little bit more brawly. Might be uh, in their favor coming up on this fight. They're just hiding in the statue right now, waiting for the main wall to come through. You can see them taking all their different angles in case multiple targets come through. They put it down. It looks like Oasis or uh, Osias is the only one that goes through here. Actually, now all these players are going to be picked up in the back line because that May was so far away. They weren't able to provide any sort of help, whether that be a May wall or what have you. And now everybody going down on the side of Team Money sent back into their spawn to regroup. And I mean, they didn't really get any damage in there. Supreme close to their ultimate of about 60%. That was the worst case scenario for Team Money. Uh, Oasis is not going to have this Blizzard online. We're already hearing that last 20 seconds coming in. In fact, they're not going to get any ultimates online. Meanwhile, Gummy, 76% to the Shatter. Yes, you're going to have to land it to two shields, but you're going to find so much value if you manage to get the team on the back. Yeah, and they try to use that Earth Shatter. They're not quite able to pick anybody up. The Amplification Mage is also down, but it looks like these two ultimates may not really see any use out of them at all. Pima Jelly is now going down the fight, even yet again at a 5v5 now. And it might be the offense here because of how those ultimates were used and they weren't able to see much value might be able to take this point here does 
It is going down though. Hero is staying up for a little bit longer to try to continue uh, this offense. But where's my jewel? On the Reaper, trying to put in as much damage as possible, but the focus fire is just too much. There's too many players on the objective right now. It looks like they're gonna be able to cap this. And Ashton is going to have this Death Blossom, which you can absolutely combine with this Blizzard, which is going to be coming online for Team Money. So you have so many things that you can put in to make sure that payload doesn't stop, because you have to make sure that payload doesn't stop. You can't get off it. This is overtime. The second someone stops touching that card, it's just going to dwindle and map over. And Dusk coming close to that Earth Shatter. I believe this payload, you are actually able to use it underneath, so... If there is a good opportunity that presents itself. They will probably use it. The Blizzard coming through first here from Sai and now followed up by Osias. They're now on the point. The Death Blossom's coming through. It's able to pick up two, make that three. They're going to be able to continue this cart forward here. Supreme just touches the point for at least a second longer. A team kill coming through. That's going to give them enough time to just start getting through this second phase here to try to make it to the next objective. And they have enough ultimates to do so. Dusk still has the Shatter. Mythology still has... The signed barrier, they've got sustainability and they've got aggression on their side. Gummy is coming up to a shadow of his own, but Dusk has one already built up. So he can initiate with that one. And Gummy's still going to be trying to build it up, won't be able to go for that direct counter shatter. So Dusk still has that opportunity to just put the shield up and block it. Yeah, right now the Reaper up top actually gets booped down. Mythology calls them out, catches them. Teleporting right back up top though, going to be spotted out. All eyes on him right now. The Shatter comes through. Not quite able to pick up anybody for either side with their Shatters. They're going to be using that Immortality and now the Sound Barrier as well going through here. The Implication Mage is down. Where's my jewel? Able to pick up Dusk. Now also able to pick up three more. Just like his counterpart in the fight before. Only difference is this is where the point stops because of it. Four minutes, six seconds to get that payload just a little bit away from that point B. Doable extremely doable this this is when i start thinking maybe you need to bring something a little bit different in for your defense of king's row because you have to have an iron tight hold on that point realistically if you lose that point and you lose the next team fight once that payload started rolling you've lost control of the choke and you're only going to get one more team fight in to make sure that that payload doesn't reach that final spot so yeah. what you need to do is you need to come in with something that's going to guarantee you holding on to that point for at least two minutes if you want to set yourself up with the best chance of making sure that payload just does not get to that yeah and i think that what is kind of something that will happen teams is they'll see such a massive time bank and maybe take it kind of more relaxed approach and just be like ah oh, we'll get it eventually when you know, they, they need to make sure that they stay in their mindset of, okay, let's hurry up and get this objective as fast as we can. Uh, of course, teams up in the higher ranks don't really uh, do it too often, it feels like. But it's still something you may see every now and then. You may see them get a little bit more relaxed. But, of course, they got to make sure that they stay their competitive edge up here. They have the time. As long as they use it wisely, they're going to be able to continue forward here and get this point fast. And then hopefully for them, get the point there fast as well make sure that that time is used wisely and they're going up to the high ground it seems i think they're trying to get around with this sigma and hanzo they're trying to just take all of the space but unfortunately that costs them they're gonna lose the reinhardt and now they're gonna be split yeah losing out two players already osias which is absolutely shredding them from afar with these uh little ice shards that they're able to shoot out right now just hiding up at the top where's my jewel looking for a pick but so many of the teammates have already been taken out even if they do get a pick like they have there is it really going to be able to bring anything uh up to the rest of the team and give them the opportunity to go in osias though going down is also going to help that maybe there is now a chance for them to go in here since they don't have that main now would be their time the immortality has been used up top so they won't have it just rushing in here on this fight hero Using that Fortify as they run in here, Mythology getting taken out. That's a lot of heals going down for them right now. It does look like they're going to be able to continue forward here now. Nothing is going to stop them in their path towards success. Now Osai is just running back as fast as possible, just trying not to get picked. Has to hang out on the ice block a little bit longer as more and more of Sion is just following him. Oh, unfortunately for Team Money... Uh, Cyan are just gonna have so much control of this payload in this next fight because they're the ones with the ultimates. Osias is coming up to the blizzard, yes, 
but if Supreme initiates with this amplification matrix, they're not gonna walk in and put a blizzard in. They're gonna want to walk away. Yeah, and speaking of walk in, actually in the back line right there, Gummy was looking to get a sneaky shatter behind, but Osaya saw that happening. Put a wall up right before it connected on the ground. What could have been potential uh, of a team fight loss for them to make them go through this first choke here, which can be so good for the defense to hold and stall out for so much time. Has now been kind of shattered, uh, if you excuse the pun there. Now as they move forward, though, they have to be careful of this Blizzard. Now Blizzard's coming out from both sides, though the Transcendence as well, trying to keep as many people up as possible. Mythology going down, but Hero able to take out two. The fight now in their favor, but it looks like it's getting even back out. Pick still going back and forth. It looks like it's going to end up being Scion that takes it here. Gummy running forward. They're going to use, actually, that uh, Gravitor Flux. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to get a kill on the Supreme with that. Actually, now the only one left there is Dusk. They might just want to go in and try to get themselves reset here. It feels like they're kind of stalling themselves a little bit. They do go down eventually here. With about a minute on the time bank, though, they're really close to that uh, objective. Yeah, and Supreme still has this amplification matrix. If Gummy manages to land a fire strike through it and it hits anyone, that is Shadow built up, and you have Wesmojo with the Step Blossoms ready for that follow and clean up immediately afterwards. Yeah, but starting off, Ditch has already gotten two. Where's my duel now getting a hero? The Shadow goes through. No one's even able to touch the point in time because so many of Sign were just running into T Money at the time there. So, first map, well, they did have quite a large time bank. They were able to dwindle it down to a minute. So really only a minute is what separated these teams uh, in their offensive pushes. So, so far, it's looking pretty close. It's looking a little bit close in some aspects, but in other ones, the two teams are pulling ahead in different ones. So we saw that Sion tried to go for those very flanky, sneaky plays, that back shatter. Didn't work out. In fact, they lost the team fight, the next team fight after that one because the Ryan wasn't there and the Lucio wasn't there because they just gone out. They'd been punished for that flanking. So Team Money have shown that they're able to shut down those pushes. Just as we saw that they were able to immediately shut Gummy's push when Sion tried to big brain that approach, get onto the high ground with the maid, they lost the Ryan early. So Team Money, they they dominate the before the team fight. Sion Esports, they dominate the during the team fight. And even if you lose a couple of members before the team fight properly begins, if you can take an advantage when the team fight is happening, those are the important moments. Those are when the picks coming in start really mattering. So if Team Money can take the punishment that they're finding on those flanks and channel them into when Sion Esports are in that team fight, then they have that opportunity to pull ahead in that aspect. Yeah, make sure you keep your eyes on the team fight and remember to vote down below for your MVP because after the match, we will be having an interview with your voted MVP of the night, whether that be on the winning team or the losing team. Whoever you guys thought was really pulling through and doing their job today will be the one interviewed afterwards for the match. I mean we haven't really got to see any proper standout carry plays, but I think that mo uh, both mates have to be in the discussion because Blizzard and the Wolves are having such a huge impact. And we're really getting to see that teams are starting to properly utilize those abilities, whether it's blocking shatters, whether it's blocking amplification matrixes, wh whether it's separating uh, teams, splitting them in half, and just having that advantage in numbers without needing to do any of the work to secure kills. May is strong, and the players that are on that hero, they have to be strong as well. They have to keep their cool, excuse the pun. They have to be level-headed, and they have to put Blizzard in in those opportunities where it's going to find value, because Blizzard is one of the win conditions that a lot of team fights hinge on, and if you put it in at the wrong moment, you're throwing an ult away that isn't a throwaway ultimate. It's not the amplification matrix. It's not the shadow. If you mess it up, there are ramifications and consequences that you will be feeling in the next team fight. Yeah, and now as we move forward here, it looks like they're going to be deciding to go with Li Zhang Tower here. And I mean, this, this, this could be a, a little bit more of an even duel, it feels like, since they're both going to be on the offense technically at the same time. It's really going to come to, I think whoever gets the point first is going to be the one that's going to end up taking the specific round. Because I feel like uh, 
while both teams seemed very good on their offense, yeah, it feels like a little bit easier to be able to defend a point once you get on control center. Just or once you get on um, uh, King of the Hill maps, because you kind of know all the angles that people come through. You don't have to really about flanks too much because especially here on gardens, there's really only two routes they can go and it's very easy to spot which way they're going to be going. Meanwhile, uh, if you're on the offense, technically, if you're trying to capture the point back, it can be a little bit harder because you don't know if someone's going to be hiding around a corner that maybe your whole team is going through, whether it be uh, a Reaper with a Death Blossom or just a Lucio going for some crazy Reddit boop, you know? I mean, you got to be careful of these things, but if you're on uh, the defending side after you've already captured the point so far, it makes it a little bit easier, I feel like. And in particular, if you're playing Anna and you've already got control of that point, you're allowed to set up in defensive positioning where you feel safe, as opposed to where you have to try and approach the point where you can be very easily collapsed in upon. And Supreme taking up that mantle, trying to build up that nano to put onto site. Survivability on that support is absolutely key if they want that composition to work. Yeah, and as they go forward here, it looks like the first person actually taking out is Kitty King. Losing out on the Baptiste early is a very big deal. That's a lot of heals you're going to be missing out on. And now multiple players are suffering because of that. Not enough heals going in here and a lot of damage going through. It looks like the first people to take the point here are, in fact, going to be Scion. Yeah, so we talked about it. They needed to win that point. They needed to set up in those defensive pockets where they can find the value, where they can get a couple of early picks in and stay alive in. If Supreme is able to sleep someone, then the rest of the team, that dive, can just immediately go for their first. And at the moment, the only real counter to this Hammond coming in is Osiris on the May trying to get the freeze on. Yeah, and as soon as you lose out on that May, then it's just free range keeping them kind of at bay here and a really good antinate is going to get dusk actually out of that uh mech as soon as possible now with the full smoke coming through it's actually going to be able to take out dusk completely from the fight making this a true 5v6 scenario right now losing out on kitty again a lot of that heal is already gone not what you can do once something like that happens and it's going down though eliminating that hammond leads for the rest of the players to kind of look at the other ones as well Ashton looks like he's going to be able to pick up two kills here as they continue forward. Hero getting taken out though. Losing out on that Arisa. That's a lot of uh, it's a lot of potential stall you have on there. You're losing out on the shields. And now the Death Blossom coming out. Not 100% necessary, I don't think, but go ahead and throw it in there to try to secure yourself that win there. The Blade actually coming through. And Mythology trying to use that sound barrier runs straight into one of the mines. And it should place down onto the point. That is not the play that you want to happen when the, you're the Lucio. And even though that Nanoblade doesn't secure the kills that it should have when the Steinberg just isn't available, all of Team Money are just in disengage mode. And so the point flip comes in. I mean, the point flip hasn't even come in yet. Sion have been holding onto that point the entire time. Now you've got 81% on the board. Team Money have nothing. They've got the Blizzard. They need to start putting it in, but they have to be so wary of Gummy because that de defense matrix will just immediately take it off the board. Yeah, now actually a pretty good bomb goes through. Dusk already out of the mech yet again. Finally, it looks like that blizzard's going to be coming through here, but no one's actually in it. It looks like it's just going to actually be buying them themselves from Space Mythology and take it down, though. It's going to make it a little bit harder to try to take control of this point. The bongo coming through here to try to do a little bit of damage. It looks like all these members are just going to be going down, though. And of course, Sai getting that blade is going to go ahead and use it as fast as possible. Dusk throwing down that bomb as a last-ditch effort. The only one left on point right now. Already d as soon as they're in it, pretty much. Last one on point. They're, uh, they need to take them out fast. And it looks like finally the overtime goes down. That was a messy map for T-Money. It really was. If you reach the point where you've been fighting on a point and it's hit 70% and you're still fighting on point and you're not winning, you need to disengage, you need to stop trickling in, you need to come in full six people with ultimates, eco push until you've got them built up and then go for a proper assault. Otherwise you are just throwing time and tick percentage to your enemy, which Siren Esports will be more than happy to collect. Yeah, and now going into this next point, we're seeing pretty similar composition, actually, it feels like, on the side of Scion, and uh, for the start, at least, uh, on the side of Team Money as well here. So going up with these matchups, again, head-to-head, -head, they got taken out the first time trying to get to the point for Team Money, but will they be able to actually make it there without getting an early pickoff onto them? Because it's a big question. 
Nick is still on that Hammond. So you are gonna have the boots and the anti to immediately follow up. It's looking pretty rough for Team Money. These anti nades have been absolutely massive. I mean, just landing on at least two, maybe even three players. And of course, you're just able to go in with this dive and dominate them because there's not much they can do, you know? I mean, the only thing they can really do is throw down that immortality. It's just like, okay, everybody's staying here for as long as possible, but the match you're gonna have is five seconds, so try to hurry up and get in a better position. It just makes it so much more difficult for them. They can't be aggressive. So being stuck on this passive uh, sort of, you know, play style is not what they want to do right now. And we're seeing Team Money, they've actually just thrown in the towel on that composition. They're going to be swapping over the admit defeat. They're going to be turning to a dive of their own, but losing the Sombra to the Hammond, not something you see every day. Nick is just going to be building up to those mines, ready to shut down all of the space because Team Money is just playing in a corridor at the moment. They're just hemmed in. Taking their time right now, they got to wait for their Sombra to get back. I think what they're going to probably end up waiting for, I imagine they're going to go for a hack onto the Ana. And then the dive is going to be initiated onto her. But right now, I think he's just trying to find that player in particular. And where's my jewel actually being nailed on the tracer right now? Could put through a lot of damage. A stick actually onto the Sombra. But they did end up losing on Supreme in that dive. But I think that's not going to be what's going to stop them from continuing to keep hold of this point. Because PMA, of course, is just going to go in for that res as soon as they try to make their way over to the point to uh, recontrol it. And actually, all these mines coming down right now is going to make it hard for them. And as well, the, with the bomb, there's not much you can do. The point completely stopped away from you. PMA Jelly does go down, though. But it's not going to matter when Where's My Jewel is just going to be out here killing everybody on the objective. And here's these long drawn out team fights again 73% and team money. They've only really got two engagements in. And they're just they're not focusing down the right targets. Yes, the dive is coming in on the support, but in my opinion, the wrong support. Because PMA Jellies is just going to be there to res Supreme up every single time the dive comes through on the Ana. And we're seeing Scion Esports just dedicate all their resources to making sure it comes through. Gummy's there with the defense matrix to make sure the Mercy survives. Yeah, now going in this next dive here. They didn't really find a target that they could really go in on. Messias is the first one to go down here. You're going to be missing out on that Sombra. They're not going to be able to get that EMP up in time, possibly here, if they're not going to be able to stay on this point. Ashen also goes down, so they're not... They're not going to have either of their DPS continuing in this fight right now. But the Barrage comes through, able to be eaten quite a bit. And it looks like they're going to be able to take her out of the fight completely right now. This point might be able to get flipped back over. They need to focus down PMA Jellies right now. They are able to do that, but size back up. It looks like they might be able to finally flip it. Where's my duel backing up? Niche hacked on to the point, up to 99%. Now they want to back up. Finally, recontest on to the point. They have it captured, but they have to get it all the way up to 100%. But Asias has the EMP, they didn't have to put it in to get that flip coming first, so when Nick puts the mines in to try and deny the space, EMP can just cancel all of the impacts out. Mythology has the sustainability as well, PMA Jelly swapping onto the Lucio just now means that you have to build that one up. And EMP just comes in and gets six people! Everybody you can get, they do. Everybody seems like they were pretty far apart, but in the perfect position. Able to get every single one of them, only the real pick going to be on side everyone else disengaging though but technically that's a fight when you just really don't get as much of the uh, all percentage that you might have liked to if maybe you were able to get a few more kills here and actually it looks like hero might go down size getting really aggressive here on this reaper trying to take out those tanks ashton though with supreme being down now you're gonna have to be focusing a lot more uh with that lucio on the heels rather than the speed to try to engage or disengage making it a little bit more difficult for them but it looks like that's not going to be too big of a deal. The bomb comes through. Mythology going down. Right now, the team fight still going a little bit back and forth. They're able to pick up size. So I think this is going to be what makes sure that they're going to win this team fight. Now that they're down, that Reaper that could provide so much damage. But the mines are coming through right now. Niche looking for a pick. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to find one, actually. Still going in the nano boost onto Where's My Jewel. Both of these support ultimates used now on the side of Team Money as they continue forward here. Where's My Jewel, though, is going to be able to find the kill on the Ash and Supreme going down. Now with both of the supports still up for Team Money though, could make it so that way they keep this point in their control and with about over 80% they can continue on. It looks like they might be able to hold it but maybe not too, maybe not for too long as now they're getting more and more picks on the side of Scion. Now it looks like they're controlling the point a lot more aggressively here. There's not much they can do. If Ashen was the only one that would be able to touch here. Lucio Mythology is making their way back, able to touch the point to reset the, over, uh, the overtime wick. But it doesn't look like anyone else is going to make it there in time. And now the second map going over to Scion. The final nail in the coffin 
for that last team fight was EMP comes out and catches no one. And I mean no one. Of the six players on the side of Cyan Esports, no one gets caught in the radius. So none of their abilities are wiped, which means that they can just concentrate on getting the kills. In fact, Supreme's positioning before the EMP even came out meant that two players on the side of Team Money had to dedicate their resources, move away from the point, one of which was a Lucio, to get the Ana out of the fight. And yeah, that removes Supreme from the side of Scion, but it removes two people from your own team. And suddenly you're at a huge disadvantage just trying to fight that out on point because it's a slugfest. Yeah, and I think when we were talking about that one fight in particular on Night Market where they went for the Ana, but then they went over to the point to try to cap it, they lost a few of their players. And then the res just came right through. I kind of wish that maybe instead of them just going straight to the point, they kind of hit around that wall that was right near it. And I'm not sure if the Sombra was still up at that time. I knew that the tanks were and that the Lucio was, uh, but maybe their goal should have been instead to try to get that pick, make it look like they back off, have the Sombra there invisible. And then as soon as PMA Jelly goes in for that res, maybe try to get a quick hack in and then focus them down as well. So. I don't know, maybe just some uh, just some idea that I can try to think of really quick that maybe changes how the team fights go. Uh, it looks like the ban from Sion is going to be on to Volskaya. Now Team Money trying to come up with another map, and it's like, what, what do they play here? It's a tricky one. It's a very tricky one, because at the moment, Sion have shown that they're stronger in the May game, and May can be played on almost any map. And the maps that May can't really get played on Farer is very strong. So Sion have the best of both worlds when it comes to these DPS picks. And so Team Money, they're actually going to opt into Hollywood. And Hollywood, yes, is still very strong when you want to play Mei, when sometimes you even want to play Farer. But you also get a couple of opportunities to shut them down that you don't get in other maps. For example, if you're trying to hold that point on Hollywood and you think that you're going to run against a Farer, you can Bastion bunker up right behind the point, take the high ground, have the Batiste there for Immortality Field, keep the Bastion alive, and then as soon as Farah comes towards that point, all of her line of sight, all of the protection, all of the high buildings that she likes to hide behind on that point approach, they're all gone. It is just empty space, and she can just get cut out of the clouds immediately. Yeah, but I think that, I don't know, it feels like the Bastion composition is become a little bit more it's come to the point where i feel like the highest level players are going to be able to overcome that eventually given either enough time or just uh the right sort of engagement onto that um i actually really like the fact that team money picked this map because in their last match against um forefront they 3-0 uh they got through all of hollywood with a good time bank and then they were able i think to not even let them capture uh the point to begin with so i think team money is gonna see themselves having a win on this map for i'm i'm almost certain that they're gonna win this map i think this is this is probably their best map you're gonna you're gonna put some uh, some some meat on the line you're gonna put your money where your mouth is and i'm not gonna put any team money down okay i'm not <laughs> I'm not 100% uh, confident. 99, but not 100. Well, yeah. if you look at the composition that Scion Esports are running at the moment, they're feeling that there's the pharmacy coming out because Where's My Jewel is on the McCree. And at the moment, with the meta being the meta, you only run the McCree if you think that you're going to be running into a pharmacy. It's a very risky gamble because the attackers have that chance to see what the defenders are running and immediately swap it up that you just do not get on the side of the defense if you send that mccree away from the team fight to go back and swap then you lose one person without even a death coming through but there'll be no pharmacy coming out from team money and ashton should have all of the advantage in this dps engagement because the mccree needs to be a lot closer he's a flanker and he's going to find so much trouble trying to flank this team because they're going to be playing so close together yeah, and strangely enough, they're trying to stay on the high ground for as long as possible until they see their opportunity actually to go in and just rushing straight into their face right now. A few of the picks, though, do look like they're going to be able to come through, sending the offense packing up, staying behind a little bit, knowing that they did uh, manage to get out one of the players, though. So maybe maybe they just try to do a quick regroup and then run right back in. 
Especially because the player that you, they lost was the Batiste. So you have the sustainability that the opponents do not have. Yeah, now Team Money already used that Baptiste ultimate here. It looks like they're going to be at least able to get a tick here. Niche, though, is going to be taken out before they're able to get down onto that point because of that Discord. But in the back line, you got to watch out. Where's my duel? Able to get one. Make that two. Supreme now able to take out Osiris. Now, with that amplification matrix up, it's just going to make it all the more difficult for the offense here to continue forward. Not even able to pick up a tick, actually. That's painful. They invest ultimates. They think that that is their fight to take. And it's not. And now they're gonna have to approach this point completely anew. And they're gonna be walking into a Deadeye, which is just gonna separate the team, force them to find cover. And if you play this smart, Gummy can just hide behind a corner and put in that shadow where he knows that all of Team Money are gonna be fleeing to. Yeah, now going forward, I mean, it's gonna be a difficult one. They're just kind of looking for picks right now to start off the fight on the side of the offense, just trying to get that arrow going in here. And actually a massive shatter able to take out four of the players now down on the ground. Everybody just seems to be going down now. They use the high noon in the back line. Osai is taking on where's my jewel, but it looks like the flashbang could be able to secure them. The kill onto the May. Now, I mean, a solid team kill. What a great shatter. Just runs right past that shield, not having any worries. Osiris almost completely cancelled it. The Maywell was a nanosecond too late to block it. Team Money knew what the play was going to be, but they just weren't able to have that re uh, re response time. And so now they're going to be coming into a blizzard. In fact, the blizzard is going to go straight on to them, forcing out the transcendence. Yeah, and where's my jewel already taking out Osiris on that May, losing out on your May early in the fight's not very good. But it looks like Sai is also gonna be going down here in a second too. They use that bongo. The tanks are pushed up right now. They're gonna elect to use their gravel flux here. Lucio first using his ultimate in the air to make sure everyone stays up, but it doesn't look like anyone's gonna be able to stay up from that. Everybody's sent packing back to spawn. Meanwhile, two of them remain here. Niche on the Arisa. Looks like they're gonna be going down. So now it's just where my where's my jewel? Just trying to find a pick for two. Going ahead and use that high noon. They're gonna switch off anyways. You know, might as well try it. Maybe you get a pick or two. Maybe they don't kill you fast enough. But you know, little little hopeful there. Might as well. well at, at this point, you swap off the McCree, and that's yeah. exactly what they're gonna be doing because you need to take control of the high ground on Hollywood B. And Ashton on the hands load means that you do have to have that contest coming, and he cannot be allowed the free reign that you would have if he was running up against a McCree. So you have to win up against that DPS, and you have to remember that that dragon is going to be coming through, so Supreme has to squeeze this immortality field out, because if he puts it down early, that Marissa pull is just going to mean that you need to have it up, otherwise kills are going to be coming in, and they're going to be on the enemy side. Yeah, and right now, Kitty King, the first one to go down here. The offense is going to have a little bit harder of a time continuing forward, but unless, of course, they are able to take out one of the uh, shield tanks, on the defense here for Scion as they move forward. Team Money just trying to get more kills. Now both of those tanks are gone. Just the May left on point in that little ice cube waiting for them to come out. They are able to pick them off. And Kitty King, PMA, just going in there trying to take them out. Kitty King said, uh, no, thank you. Just go ahead and get a quick headshot there with the Discord to take them out of their fight. And look, Ashton is going to be setting up again on this high ground. Has the Batiste actually behind him, so if he gets into a little bit of a difficulty. And the Sigma Shield as well. These guys, they're really putting in so many resources to controlling this high ground. They know how important it is. Because Cyan Esports, they're going to have to step out of these doors. And they're just going to go into so much damage straight at their faces. Yeah, now as they run forward, a really good May wall again to stop that shit from coming through. Good, very readable there, but of course, Osiris going down, losing out on both Arisas and one of the Mays now out of the fight. Supreme over at the top, using that amplification matrix uh, to for himself to try to pick up a kill or two here. A few are going to go down in the back line right now. Kitty King using that ultimate to get out, getting a little bit caught out, signing to back up. They still have potential to put in some damage here. If they pick off Supreme, Ash and challenging them on the high ground, but a really good fire strike is going to be in it to take them out and now. They definitely have to back up. Losing out on your Hanzo, that's a lot of your damage. If Mythology is able to make it out of here, that could be really good. It looks like they are going to be able to make it out. So, about a minute 30 on the time. And again, what comes down to who's going to get this next team fight win are these Batistes. Yes, these two Hanzos, they've got the dragons. You have to put them in in a way that pressures the Batistes into putting Immortality Field in. So, it's going to be up to whichever one of these supports is able to hold their cool and not put it in so that they'll have it online for when Blizzard comes through. Yeah, PMA Jelly's getting really close to that beat. If they are able to get that before that Blizzard comes through, that could be very crucial. And it looks like there goes the Blizzard, there goes the Dragon. Dragon on both sides now, and now the Blizzard as well. 
but it looks like right now the only one getting the picks are Team Money. As I say that, though, Asias goes down, and that Blizzard actually lets Supreme get a few kills of their own. Make that a 3k for Supreme. The beat's been used. 40 seconds left on the clock. Kitty King and Ashen just kind of running on to the point, trying to see if they can't get kills, or at least hurry up and get killed for the reset. And now going into this next fight, ultimate-wise, it's not going to be many. It's going to be an amplification matrix versus the superchargers. And every single day of the week, I will give this to the team who are defending. Because they're the ones who can afford to wait the clock out. Hero is going to have to put the superchargers in to initiate and hope that Scion Esports don't just pull away and negate the damage because they're going to have to touch that payload. Yeah, now a really good pull. Might be able to take out Where's My Jewel, but able to use that Hanzo uh, little dash to get himself back up onto the high ground. They're going to be able to touch the point here. I was afraid for a second they weren't going to be able to touch it this time in case they may not have noticed, but they were. Now the amplification makes you just come through here. So much damage getting through, but actually the only pick going right now onto PMA as they continue forward here, just trying to make sure that they get anyone on the side of T-Money out. Scion doesn't look like they're going to be able to pick up any more kills as T-Money just kind of walks more into their face, but it looks like Dusk is going to be the one getting taken out now. They have little healing on the side of Scion right now. All these ultimates coming through can make it very difficult to stay on for as long as possible. It looks like Hero gets caught on the wrong side of the Maywall. And that's where the cart is going to stop in the first round. Shy, just shy of that second objective. But if you're Scion Esports, you were hoping for that full hold on Hollywood. And you didn't get it. So you can bleed on this map. You can absolutely lose on this map. That was a very close fight. Team Money almost managed to put that payload in to be and that would have secured them even more time on the clock there are cracks that they're starting to find in the composition that scion are running and if they can start knuckling down on those and taking those cracks and turning them into full-on earthquake dramas then they should be able to see themselves through hollywood yeah i, I think the big thing is for um t money uh, continuing to try to go forward in this match while they're holding i like the fact that scion was actually at the top holding the objective uh just waiting for a good time to kind of go in with uh certain abilities to try to get the picks i thought that was kind of interesting to see uh they're not running uh the same composition on the defense here so we're probably not going to see the same thing here you know normally teams don't really hold up on that high ground you normally see them hold kind of like this first corner that's going on to the point or maybe they try to uh stay up top in the like little restaurant area but it looks like they are actually going to be going up top maybe maybe it's just because i haven't seen hollywood in a while but for some reason i i don't feel like i remember a lot of teams kind of holding up this high ground at the start no you would normally find a widowmaker or a hanzo there but you would normally try to hold uh on the low ground but no they're gonna be trying to just take this high ground and they'll they'll just drop on because it forces uh your opponent to walk into the choke and they're not able to reach you while you're able to lob and damage. Yeah, it looks like a couple of Maywall stacked on top of each other. A little bit of Fortnite action as they go in here. Actually, it looks like Scion's electing to go around to the back of the point, forcing them to drop down, not giving them the chance to use this high ground to their advantage, and actually deciding, you know what, we're going to go and try to take the high ground from you, but it looks like they're saying, no, this is ours. Back off, able to get Supreme and side, but where's my jewel? Of course, able to get at least one kill in this fight. They do have the high ground now, and they have the shields for the tanks, but they don't have any type of support. They have to back off, and now Gummy going down. Everybody actually managing to go down before they're touching that immortality that's just right there, right in front of their face. The point was right there, Pozak. They could have gone onto the point, and they would have forced Team Money to drop down, or at least managed to get one tick of that uh, of that point in their favor but they get a little bit too cocky a little bit too aggressive and they try to move into a place that they really shouldn't be looking for and they're going for this rotation again but look you're already seeing team money just adapt to it they're already moving in they're waiting because they know that those stairs are going to be ascended once more yeah now they are just staying more on the point right now making them drop forcing them to drop they use the wall kitty king actually getting taken out by niche to start off caught a little bit out of position there i believe not quite sure where they were. They might have been alone in that uh, little area, uh, the re little restaurant area. Uh, right now, it looks like that dragon's going to come through. Not able to quite pick up anybody. They are going to have to go back. They might be looking for the spawn kill, and they do. Kitty King dead yet again by Where's My Jewel? Yeah, it's, it's a very bizarre position. Both of these teams have kind of swapped. The attackers have become the defenders. Yeah, 
time. He's just going back into that spawn. But right now, it looks like the kills, though, are going to be going in the side of the defense, doing a fairly good job so far. But, of course, where's my duel able to get so many picks, it feels like? Nothing can stop them at this point except for Dusk and Ashen, who are just waiting right outside that doorway to meet them, either with a, uh, an arrow or some small black holes. And Asias is actually go goes down in that fight, but will not be spawn camped. So we'll manage to make it back to the team with that blizzard, and Sai does not have that one available. So PMA Jelly's Yas is going to be coming up to the sidebar, and Yas, you obviously have your immortality field. No, you don't. Your Baptiste is down. Your blizzard in immediately. Both Baptiste are down. The blizzard's down. And it looks like right now, the defense still going to be able to hold a little bit longer. It's, I mean, so far so good for the defense here. They just got to wait for the Baptiste to get back. And I want to be honest, when we were talking about that one engage, the first engage earlier where they made it up uh, to the high ground, I feel like it wasn't a super bad call, but the fact that they lost Supreme before they could actually start the fight kind of, you know, made it absolutely, you know, difficult for them. It's, There's it's not much they can do. Rotations. And rotations have to be cleaned. You can't afford when you're moving position to lose players. And that's exactly what happens once more. The Lucio goes down and Sly on the left is such a hard spot because they can't disengage with the male in the way. Yeah, the Lucio was wall riding to try to get the boop off onto the high ground. I think it's a fine idea, but maybe you want to wait. Use your speed boost to get the rest of your team around the corner. And then maybe you try to go for that up top when no one's wait or when no one's watching. It looks like right now they're trying to go all in. They're actually able to get Ashton right now. A good wall separates them to stop them from getting hurt by the blizzard at all there. Kitty King going down along with side. They're using that beat in the back here. The tran or the uh, gravel fuck is going through onto where's my jewel. He's not gonna be going down though. In fact, he's gonna be taking down Dusk, the one who put him in the air. It looks like finally this offense might find themselves a little bit of a breather. As this blizzard goes down though, it's gonna catch Gummy. So Ashen potentially able to put a lot of damage into him. But of course, with that Baptiste there, you're not gonna be able to get much done. But they are managing to find a foothold on this point. And yes, there is that potential for that contest. You needing to have that free ticks as more than the opportunity for Team Money to be able to scramble together a defense. But it looks as if they've already admitted that that point is lost. They're going to be regrouping. They're going to wait for that payload to get through those doors before they probably try and launch the contest because they have to be so careful. They cannot afford to go gung ho all into the next engagement because they don't have the advantage. The damage is going to be coming out on the side of Sion. They have to be able to turn tail and dart into these buildings on the side. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just looking at Optimus right now, Moxie, I mean, they just have such an advantage on the offense here. So many at their disposal. So maybe they just want to hurry up and try to get a quick fight here at the start to try to bait some out. They're using the only ultimate they have. They managed to bait out the other amplification matrix. But I mean, you're trading one for the other. You're still not finding yourself in an advantage hoping that maybe they try to use something here keep it close on the point nobody really getting picked off maybe maybe the shatter comes through and that it does they're using the maywall also it looks like the mccree is going to be using the high noon picks going through right now mythology going down is a pretty big deal especially because they will be missing out on this immortality that is now down for the offense to keep everyone else alive kitty king the last one on point there pma actually just going ahead saying, you know what, I'm just going to straight up Rocky Balboa and I'm just start punching everybody in the face now. One minute 15 left. left on the clock and T-Money has this transcendence coming online. If they can manage to get the Zen to touch that cart, then you have that chance. You can buy the time, but no! The size goes down on the Tracer! It's getting very, very scary here. They use the transcendence. It looks like it's going to be able to keep the tanks at least a little bit longer here for the rest of the team to group up. Using the Flux, they're going to get quite a few players in that. Where's my Jewel already getting down? And now everybody low because of that Flux. This might be their time. Supreme up at the top, able to put in at least a little bit of damage before they themselves go down. Now 40 seconds left on the clock. The defense did a good job here at holding it off a little bit longer. They're going to be coming up not only on the Dragon, but also on this Amplification Matrix. Meanwhile, the offense, they're going to have a few of their disposals as well, potentially. It's still going to be so difficult for them to get that payload all the way to where it needs to be because Gummy Yas is coming up to the shadow. But as soon as that Ryan drops the shield, the amount of damage coming out from the side of Team Money, he's just going to be obliterated. It's going to be difficult, definitely. But actually, Dusk gets knocked down onto the point. Could have been a very, very big pick potentially. Ashen going down, but the dragon's already gone through, so it's not that big of a deal. PMA Jellies, though, getting taken out is kind of a big deal, but it doesn't matter. The DPS are going in, getting as many picks as possible right now side looks like they're able to do quite a bit on that doomfist now everybody's gone on the side of t money 
And Scion, they didn't even need to put the shadow in. They put it on top of the payload as it rolls to be to assert their dominance. And after that fight, I can, yeah, I can put my hands up and say dominance asserted. Dominance asserted indeed. And while we're at this little play of the game right now of Hollywood, don't forget to go down below and hurry up and vote for your MVP. The 3-0 came through today, but I can't help but think that it was a close 3-0, it felt like, for the majority of it. Maybe Li Zhang was a, a little bit more in Scion's favor, but it felt like the rest of it, you know, was fairly close. It wasn't as one-sided to Hollywood as you thought it was gonna be going into that map. Team Money really did start fighting back, especially on that defense. They managed to hold on to that point for so long. In fact, you could see that they almost pulled Hollywood back. If that last engagement had gone on any differently, if they'd managed to keep a couple of picks uh, go from going their side early, then we would be looking at another map, another chance for these guys to really start trying to go for that reverse sweep, but sadly, it's just not gonna be today. Yeah, you know, sometimes it happens. Unfortunately, uh, T-Money is gonna be out of the tournament. This was the lower bracket, so unfortunately, this is the last we'll be seeing of them, but you can keep your eyes on Scion as they uh, go from this 3-0 into their next match. Uh, which I'm not sure who that's going to be up against yet. I think they're going to be going up against the losers uh, or the loser of, um, I forget, I forget the team, whatever. I forget I was even talking about it, okay? I'm tired. <laughs> Anyways, but so uh, they're going to be going up uh, against somebody. They're going to continue on in the bracket. They still have a chance to make their way through the lower bracket, back up to the upper bracket to try to take that title of the winner. But I mean, right now, I think we have a powerhouse called Citizens that have just kind of been going through. We do have a little bit, but Sion, I mean, they're not one to sleep on. They've shown that they can play the current meta. They've shown that they can swap that pharmacy into the equation, which teams that can have that flexibility will pull ahead of teams that cannot because Farah is just so strong when she's left unchecked. And if you can't deal with her, uh, with the meta picks, you have to start logging on to counters and that mixes up the compositions that you've been trying to, to hold together and suddenly you've got a McCree playing with an Arista Sigma Bat Zen and everything just goes out of the window because with that composition you're relying on the wombo combo, you're relying on those big team fight winning ultimates and a Deadeye just is an excuse at the moment at least to, to reload your bullets. Yeah, and you know, I think that it it has kind of a, a weird place right now, but we may be seeing it used a little bit more as we were talking about the, the PTR update that happened uh, today, so fairly recently, and how that could end up changing for the McCree. So where's my jewel going forward in this tournament? Keep your eyes on them playing that McCree, and you know, maybe when the patch comes out, try to make sure you keep an eye on Scion because if they do continue to play the McCree with the the health buff, the uh, change to dead eye, you know, it could be it could be something to keep our eyes on. You know, maybe maybe we'll see a little bit more fruition here. Yeah, well, it's gonna be Kitty King who picks up the MVP, but sadly, uh, that there won't be an interview because we, we just can't get a hold of them. So I think they're a little bit busy celebrating the victory, and who can blame them? Because that was. That last map, that was that was pretty close. That was very tense, and I think I myself need to just slide a little back from the edge of my seat. Yeah, and you know, I mean, congratulations for uh, Kitty King for the MVP today. Really good job. I mean, you know, it's it can be hard to play that Zenyatta sometimes, you know. But when you're seeing Kitty play it, you know, staying in the back line is kind of one of the main priorities and making sure that they're able to keep themselves up for as long as possible, which they were able to do a lot of the times. King's Robe was a little bit shaky, but they were able to pick it back up uh, going forward for the rest of the match. So very good today. And I mean, there's not much else you can say. It was it, it felt like a close 3-0. The numbers may not show it, but it felt like a close match today, nonetheless. Yeah, not much more to say, not much more to cast, because I think that's bringing our time tonight together, Zach, to an end. So it would seem. So don't forget to follow Star Esports here on Twitch. Also check us out on Twitter and YouTube where you can keep up to date with everything. Join the Discord as well. Maybe you could uh, just come in, chat a little bit in the general, talk about the teams here. Maybe talk a little bit about the Overwatch League that'll be coming up pretty shortly. Uh, I've been Poor Zach, your play-by-play -play caster. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash Poor Zach. Uh, you can find my other socials there as well. And I'm sure you can find Got Moxie somewhere. 
Yes, I am on Twitter. I am the degenerate of social media because that's the only thing that you can currently find me on. You can find me at GutMoxie. All right, so thank you everybody for coming out today. We hope to see you again real soon.